Managed to track down the elusive Pat Sellers. He hasn't brought the Melbourne Cup with us, but he has told him the number of yards that he's won it. So I'm keen to find out how that came about and uh, whether he's got it somewhere tucked up his sleeve. It involves a number of different horses and loves the game. Pat Sellers. Thanks for having me. Mate, is it true that you won the Melbourne Cup? Uh, I didn't know. Oh, okay. My dad did though. Done and, uh, yeah, no, no, that might not have been your fault. Um, I remember coming back from uh, from the Melbourne Cup and uh, definitely getting on the juice with a lot of mates because I think I was still maybe in my second year of uni. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of talk about um, us collaborating and uh, writing a book of how to win a Melbourne Cup after the old man's horse won a Melbourne Cup. I know the Melbourne Cup's pretty important. I've got a pie. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Is there, a, is there a barbecue sauce there? Yeah, outstanding. Thanks, mate. Sorry, not to, I know, obviously, you know, it's probably the most prestigious award there, uh, prize there is in racing, but um, the lad's hungry. <laughs> Second year at uni, you're going around telling everyone Second you've won the Melbourne Cup. So yeah, it was probably, well, told me, well for told my me. first year of uni, I spent a year telling everyone that efficient would win the Melbourne Cup in a year. Um, so I reckon there was probably more taxi drivers in Palmerston North that uh, went and had a bed after taking someone home at 4 a.m. Did you have a crack at the futures yourself? Um, I actually didn't bet on them. I didn't bet on uh, any of our own horses for a while. It was a thing I had about... Um, Tell me you've given that up. Oh, unfortunately, because we haven't had one like him since then. Yeah. <laughs> what an efficient pay the day that he won the Melbourne Cup. Paid 22 bucks. Wow, he didn't have a dollar on. No, no. I got a bit of a 30s in the Turnbulls though. And is that what really got you hooked into racing? Or you'd already been involved enough? I mean, if a Melbourne Cup can't do it, yeah. what else can? I'm not, I'm not sure if I would probably have uh, gone so far into the, the owning and breeding side if the, if the Melbourne Cup didn't happen. Because um, you cover a few mares yourself now, don't you? <laughs> what about the horses? Oh, physically, no. Oh. Uh, um, I've got, I've, I actually only own one mare, but I've, uh, I've leased a couple as well. Um, but yeah, I, I sort of grew up with, um, you know, track side, track side sort of being the soundtrack to my childhood. Yeah. The old man had it on constantly. and Great tunes. Can you remember your old man's um, code on the phone bit? Yeah. You can. Yeah. 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 Is that something you remember as well? Because nah, a lot of I, people have that. Nah, my family was so poor, mate, we didn't actually have a TV to watch the racing, so I've sort of come quite a long way, but um, I heard other people talk about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. From there, it's, it's obviously, you've got more involved into the sport because of that. Um, yeah, I'd say so. And then um, definitely had a, a bit of a look at what was happening in Aussie. Both me and my brother were in it um, quite a bit in terms of just following it as fans when we were younger. Um, he probably fell out of it a little bit, still has a share in a number of horses. Um, and we, we followed the Aussie racing mostly. Yeah. And um, we just saw a lot more entertainment and stuff that they put into the, the racing game. And it always seemed like a bit more of a sport. A bit um, more of a sport so than rugby or something like that. Basically. <laughs> that was when we, uh, we actually had a crack at um, syndicating a few horses ourselves. So it started up not just me, it was me and my brother to start with. Um, and uh, we just wanted to try and simplify the process by doing like things like fixed costs and having small shares so people didn't have to fork out thousands of dollars to be involved. And so you just went around telling everyone you'd already won the Melbourne Cup and they should race a horse with you? Yeah, yeah. That, maybe that went <laughs> where, where the, uh, the yarn became that I won the Melbourne Cup as well. Yeah. So what's on the books at the moment? Dead and Torre with the Aurets down in the... Uh, uh, so he's actually landed in Caulfield about two weeks ago. What, how's the yarn go when you have to tell people, hey, I'd love to meet with you, but I've got to block out some time because I'm going to be at the pub watching my horse race. Like, how does that go down for you? Uh, you definitely don't tell the truth. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, you just normally, you just got a, got a four o'clock, you've got to get to really quickly. Like that. I had to listen to Bill Bowers win in the toilets. Um, on my phone, so I didn't even get to watch it, and then go back into a meeting. <laughs> These ones, I mean, like, sorry, we'll just carry on, can we, please? Sorry, yeah, it could be a bit awkward if you're coming out of the toilet in a yeah. meeting, flush red. Like... Yeah, that, there's that, <laughs> and then sweating, sweating <laughs> and, and your phone's just like vibrating, there's lots going on in your pocket, yeah. and also, like, if they run over time, the, the people in the meeting are sort of starting to wonder, like, yeah, yeah what, what's going on in there? 
Yeah, no, I've, yeah, I've definitely been caught in that, that situation as well. But I'm normally going back to a meeting real grumpy after I've uh, tipped out my horse and it's run down the track. I actually listened to our first horse we had with Lisa Ladder, Turbo Lini. Thought she was going to win. We had an exam, we couldn't go. Belt sat behind me, we were both involved in the horse. I've literally gone to the toilet, had my phone on me, so Massey here, this, I'll probably lose my degree. Yeah. I've listened in the toilet come out, given the dude standing at the old, uh, at the door, the old, there you go, mate. Um, and I've been on my phone the whole time listening to the race and given Belt's the old, like, this one over the thing, like it's run seventh, <laughs> and he's taken the two and thought we've run seconds, and so I'm like, oh, damn it, we haven't won. Well, I actually threw, it, I threw an exam uh, my time at Massey to get over to watch efficient win the cup. So what keeps you coming back to racing? Um, like you've had some highs, you've had some lows, you've had like you've had a dabble at all sorts of different areas. It's probably just that um, that dream of winning a big race again is, yeah. is is knowing that it's possible. You know, we're we're not a we're not a huge racing family, and we're not a huge money family. You know, we're just yeah. a, a pretty normal family from the Hutt Valley. And so, what what would you say to people that are um, you know, that haven't experienced that excitement, but they've sort of, they're involved in the industry, but they might they might, have, might still have a maiden or they've got whatever. How can you explain that feeling for them? Um, I, think, I think different people are gonna react to different things in racing. I know for me, it's um, it still feels like I'm competing in a bit of sport. And yeah. I've had injuries head to toe since I was 22. You haven't really been able to compete in anything. Yeah. So for me, either having a share in a horse and racing it or Having a bet on a horse is like might me having my say in a bit of competition. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I always treat it like a sport, and I, I think there's a there's a bit to selling the the game as more of a sport than just having a, a gamble like at the casino. The, of the industry, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pat Sellers telling taxi drivers to punt efficient in the Melbourne Cup, and also telling people. <laughs> I want to know how many taxi drivers did back him. Yeah, you probably should have got free fares for the rest of your time in Palmy, mate. Yeah. Should have been walking anyway, you lazy prick. <laughs> <laughs> Righto mate, it's been absolutely stellar. Good on you. Uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff there and hopefully hopefully you can get that Cox plate. And uh, hopefully it's with Lady Huntsman and the BGP seals. That'd be good. That'd be Cheers, good. Mate. Cheers mate. Good stuff. Take care.